Well, hi. I'm Pat Welsh, and today I'm here to talk about making an imagination garden or a fantasy garden for your children or your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. Now, the first thing you need is a pot with a hole in the bottom. And years ago, I got this one, which is a plastic container. And I made the holes in the bottom of this by using a hammer and a chisel. But first, I warmed the bottom of the pot with a candle, like that, so it would not break when I chiseled a hole through it. And then I was careful to cover every single one of those holes with a piece of broken crockery, like that, called a shard. And then you fill that with potting soil. But today I'm going to use a pottery one, and we're putting it on an upside-down old pot to hold it higher for the children. But this, too, has to have a hole in the bottom so that the drainage water goes out. You place a b broken pottery called a shard on the hole and then cover it with potting soil. When you look at the bag, when you buy the bag at the nursery garden, be sure to read the words potting soil on the bag. If it doesn't say potting soil, ask for potting soil. This is a different kind of material than soil amendments. It's made especially for filling pots. It, once you get the potting soil in the pot, Add a rock or two and kind of nestle it into the ground to look like a hill so that it looks natural, not just plunked on top. Then perhaps it might be fun, depending on what theme you're using, to make a pond in one side. I'm just using gravel for this, so we're going to have a little pond right on the edge there. Now, my theme today is a dinosaur garden for my great-grandchildren. And so we want it to look like a prehistoric landscape. You can purchase ground covers such as this Irish moss in small containers instead of a whole flat of it. And it's a good idea to have a few of some plants, not just one and loosen up the roots just slightly, kind of fondle the roots. But we could make what looks like a little meadow here next to our pond, and you're fondling the roots as you plant. That is so that they can take off better. It's nice to plant in threes like that. And perhaps it would be fun because this is a nature garden. This is not something you want to made, imagine in your mind that humans didn't make this. So you have a mix of plants. And here again, this is a creeping thyme. It's a miniature plant. You can buy it in flats, but you can also buy little tiny ones like this. This is a great one because it's called creeping thyme, thymus thurfillum elfin. That means it's just a tiny plant. Don't be afraid to take off some of the roots like that. That will help it to get going better. Kind of vary the shape of your drifts. A drift means a group of plants together. Let's then put some trees in. Now I went round my garden last night and just took cuttings of succulents already growing in my garden. And the important thing is cut them the night before so they callous off like that. That way they won't rot when you start watering your arrangement. Just sort of think that you're making a little wood. These look like little trees, don't they? So we'll pretend this is a forest. And then we might have a very large tree of another variety back here. I'm just about hiding myself over here. And then we might have, oh, let's pretend cycads. In the days of the dinosaurs, they ate cycads. Doesn't this look as though that's what it just might be? And some succulents look like that, too. This looks like a weird-looking thing. It's a crested plant, perhaps similar to something that might have lived 
in prehistoric times. This one has a little root on it already. I just pulled it out of a pot last night. I can just pull that out like that. And wow, how about palm trees? Well, I think I'll put them as if they're kind of growing in the water. You know, I've often seen these pictures of dinosaurs, imaginary of course, or movies, munching away under palm trees and amongst ferns because those were such ancient times and plants were different in those days. These flowers are maybe too big for our imagination, but it's another, uh, you know, um, kind of miniature plant, which is what you're after. As you plant, vary your textures and put little drifts together. In nature, have you ever noticed that nature will have maybe three or five of something there, and then way over here, maybe another one, as if a seed scattered? In the days of the dinosaurs, I don't think seeds were invented yet by nature, but <laughs> it's spores. They had spores in those days, and that's how the plants grew. Your children might know these things. And then when you get all through, add the figures. Now, you can make a dinosaur garden like this one. I'm going to put this one right in the water here. Oh, no, this would be better, wouldn't it? Brontosaurus, they used to kind of wander around in the swamps and your children will play with these and move them around so I'm just giving you a basic idea and <laughs> it's really a lot of fun you can make bigger ones or small ones and the kids are going to love it and you could make a western ranch or you could make a farm or you could make fairy gardens the principle is basically the same, it's the theme that changes.